as time passes with coronavirus and self-quarantine, I know that all of us are going through an S-curve, a variation day-to-day, moment-to-moment in terms of what we're feeling and what we're thinking and even what we're doing. And a couple suggestions. One is, uh, as a friend told me the other day, freeze. Take moments to just stop and ask yourself these questions. What am I feeling? And just take note, breathe, think about your feelings. Try and identify what you're feeling. Fear, anxiety, being unsure, whatever that is. Even anger, upset at what's happening. What's happened in your life and to your life or to your kids or parents. But it's good just to at least stop and identify it. So the first is what you're feeling. The second is what are you thinking? What are your thoughts that are a little different than just feelings? Anxiety, fear, worry are feelings, but thoughts are what's going to happen with my business and how will I do this and what projects or strategies do I have to take me through the summer, past the summer, etc. And even thoughts that might be negative or positive about other people with whom you're self-quarantined. And the third part is, what are you doing? What are you doing in this moment in your life? Are you doing enough to move your body? Are you doing enough to eat well? Are you doing enough to be thoughtful about your relationships and considerate of the impact that you are naturally having on other people? What are you doing to further your own goals in a time when maybe you have more time than ever to further your goals? I remember a time in my life when I had a skiing accident and my mouth was sealed shut because my teeth were knocked out and my face was open. This was a minor, but at the moment felt very major accident. And I was like, I was in my early 20s and I was rattling the bars of the cage, wanting to be able to speak and do and all those things that I had planned at that point in my life. And my wife, who was not yet my wife at the time, said, stop, maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe this silence, your own silence, is a rare chance to hear your thoughts and to think about what you want to be doing. Are you actually on the track that you want to be on in your life? Maybe that's one of the gifts that can come of this moment in your story and in your family's story, even in the story of you as a business owner or leader. Maybe this is the kind of respite, the pause between the notes of the music of your life that we never make time for, in which you can stop and think larger thoughts, take a different angle of approach on the life that you're leading. Life will go back to normal, so will you be prepared for the new normal? The second thing I want to suggest is a brief meditation. So let me offer that to you now. And if you're not a meditator, don't be thrown by the word. All meditation means stopping doing what you usually do and focusing thought. You can meditate on my glasses. You can meditate on your fingertip. All meditation means is focus. And what I want to say to you now is you're not going to get it wrong. This isn't school where you get an A or an F. Everybody's getting an A in meditating. It's just about stopping, stilling, creating quiet. If stilling's a word, let's go with it. So here's my suggestion. Pause this video if you need to. Get to a comfortable place. Turn off some of the noise around you. Maybe tell people to join you if they're in the house or room with you. Or tell them you just need a few minutes of quiet. But know that their sounds, the sounds of the world around you, belong in your meditation. So don't try and push them out and get angry when you hear a telephone going on or somebody making noise. That's all just what's meant to be. So assuming you're now in a comfortable position, just take a moment, close your eyes if you would. Trust that you can. Some of us never close our eyes unless we're blinking or asleep. It's vulnerable. So make yourself vulnerable for a moment, knowing that you're safe. Close your eyes. And when you do that, you'll realize that your focus changes. You're no longer looking outwardly. You're feeling, thinking, experiencing. So take this moment to close your eyes. And take the moment to notice sounds around you in the room, in the house, outside. Just to smile on them. They belong here just as you do. They're part of your world. And then with your mind's eye, your attention focused on your breath, just notice that, your breath. And one thing I know is that you know that whenever we focus on our breath, we change it. That's okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just notice your breath and take two or three breaths of which you are aware, not just 
something that happens in the background of your life, bring it to the foreground. Be the cameraman who chooses to change lenses and for a moment focus on breath. And as you breathe, if it's helpful to you, think of the air as having color. If it's light blue that right now feels healing and clean in a world that's actually cleaner and clearer right now from less pollution, whatever color it is, or clear like water, notice, visualize if you can, your breath coming into your lungs, not just to the top, which is just the smallest part of our lungs, but all the way down to the bottom of each sac that is our lungs. Fill it with good health. Every breath is bringing healing and health not only to your lungs, but to every single cell of your body, from hair follicle down to toenail. So allow your body's majesty to be noticed by you. That in the background, this incredibly majestic, glorious process happens constantly, always taking you toward health. That every breath, these breaths now, and all of them, when you're asleep, when you're awake, noticing or not noticing, all of that is toward your health. It's in aid of you. So if you want, take a moment just to give thanks to whatever you give thanks for that. And then take a moment as you notice your body in your chair, on the bed, on the floor, wherever you are, not driving, hopefully. Just take a notice again. Take a moment to see that there are distractions. They're okay. They belong in your meditation as well. Whatever sounds, feelings, it's okay. They're supposed to be right where they are. And take a moment then to turn your attention to an illusion that might be a big part of your life, which is that you're disconnected and separate from other souls, from other people. When in reality, I want to suggest you're never disconnected. You're never actually self-quarantined. You're always connected to other people. That the illusion is that we're separate beings and the reality might be that we're one integral being one world of beings that are interconnected, that you at this moment have a real connection with people who are across the world and across the city and across the country, that you matter to each other right now, that you're comforted and strengthened by each other right now, that you're made healthy in aid of each other right now, that you're supporting each other and that support matters and it's real that you're actually never alone. And take a moment then to dwell on relationships with your eyes closed, noticing your breath. Whenever you get distracted, just come back to noticing breath. It's so easy then to turn yourself back to quiet, to silence. But now take time to think with gratitude about the people in your world and in your life. And I would say in all the worlds, people who are living and those who have passed on, assume your interconnectedness and take some time now to see them, to think about them, to thank God for them, or just to thank them for being such an important part of your life. And don't forget the clunky people, the difficult relationships, because they're, they are there for a reason as well. Go person to person. If you're someone who can visualize, then visualize each person and think about lessons they teach you and gifts they give you and what they mean to you. And then move to a different kind of inventory with your eyes closed with the same sense of calm and stillness which is to focus on your blessings, your gifts, those talents, those abilities, those experiences, those people, all the things that make you who you are, that are the sources of your well-being and your happiness. 
and hit pause or just I'll give you a moment. You can do this at any extended time as well, perhaps every single day, ideally. Take time to notice all that is good in your life. And in case you didn't already add it in, find at least one difficulty, challenge in your life and give thanks for it as well. Because for reasons that maybe at this moment you can't comprehend, it's there for good, for goodness, for your own growth and well-being. And then come back to your body that gift and give thanks for that little tiny, sometimes unnoticeable thing that is your heartbeat that makes your skin move under your pulse. And that other thing, breath, that not only brings you health, but with every single breath, especially at a time now when you might not be getting a hug or a massage from someone, that every breath moves your ribs against your muscles, against your skin, and actually massages you constantly from the inside. So just notice that as you breathe deeply, as health and wellness and recovery and healing and strength come to all parts of you, your mind and your body. And realize how strong you are. Realize how perfectly prepared you are for today. How well designed you are to be who you are at this moment in the history of your life. And come back to your breath. And notice your breath with gratitude, not with judgment. And see as the day or night goes on, as the week or weeks go on, if you can use this often, coming back to it as a way to just calm yourself, steady yourself, remind yourself of what is, not what was, and not what might be, but this moment, the greatest singular gift that you have, 